Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mondane Designs. I'm your host Mondane, this video is part of my Tips and Tricks series, and today we're going to be talking about cable management. So most collectors actually have multiple systems like myself, and I have quite a few, I think I have like over 20 systems, and Right now, my game room isn't set up completely, but I'm beginning with the end in mind. And one of the things that I try to fight is the spaghetti monster. Um, it's also known as cable management and stuff like that. But it's it's never a good idea to have uh, all of the cables so tangled up that you that you can't do anything. You can't pull a cable. You can't restructure things. You can't you can't let some of the systems breathe if they're just cluttered up with cables and stuff and it looks like a you know a tumbleweed or something back behind the entertainment center recently when i moved into a house a few years back my wife was a little bit upset about how long i was taking to set up the entertainment center but after i was done everything was set up perfectly there were almost no cables that were visible from anywhere on the on the entertainment center. It almost looked like the the television and the Roku and everything else that we have hooked up to it was powered by magic because you didn't see anything. And then she saw the appeal and really liked it. And these are just some of my tips and some of the items that I use to go. I'm just going to be going over these things just to show you how easy it can be for you to cable manage and make things better for your video games. One of the other things is, is that it can actually help you save your games. If a power brick is really hot, you could accidentally burn your house down. Please be careful. You can do all kinds of things if you don't do cable management the proper way. I'm in no way really an expert, but let's get on with some of the some of the items that I use. I do use Velcro straps because sometimes things change and you have to undo and unwrap things. And but it's really great for keeping like things together. So if you have a couple of things that a couple of cables that go to a particular system, you know you can use a Velcro strap strap to keep them together. My other big thing is label near the ends of each cable. And when I say the ends, I mean both ends. You know, there's, it doesn't take that much to take a label maker or something like that and just find a way to put Super Nintendo on one end of the cable and Super Nintendo on the other end of the cable. That way you're not having to trace things and you're not doing any guesswork. The next thing is group cables with shrink tubing. Yes, I do sometimes group some cables with shrink tubing. You have to get a, a large enough diameter and stuff, and then you can use a hair dryer or a heat gun and shrink it down. That way it can't go out and untang you know, you know, tangle things up and get things really confusing behind the entertainment center. Now, I also use zip ties. That's kind of a controversial thing because zip ties are a little bit industrial, I guess is the best word to put it. They can be kind of harsh on cables, you know, especially if you tighten them down too much. You know, just don't tighten them down too much. Just cinch them down a little bit so that they won't slip around and you'll be fine. Now, the best thing that I do is I do not use scissors to cut off the excess on my zip ties. What I will do is I'll take a flat nose, of, uh, you know, a pair of flat nose pliers and pinch down towards the mechanism really close and then I will twist it and I will keep twisting it until it comes off. Now what this really does is it creates, it, it cuts off the, the excess amount but it does not create a sharp edge that you can cut your hand open with if you run past it with your 
by your hand a little too fast. The other thing is buy cable links for what you need. If you only need a three foot cable between your PlayStation 4 and your television, don't buy a 20 foot cable. Don't buy a 16 foot cable or anything like that. Buy what you need. One of the things that I've used is you, know, you can take a ring and you know, just a simple ring, uh, if it's like a D-clip or even a key ring or something like that, and you can use it to help trace cables. You just put the ring over the cable and you, you slide it down and you use it to help trace the cable to where it's going. Yeah, and one of the other things is when doing labels, you definitely should get a label maker. You should also get shrink tubing, zip ties, all this other stuff. Another really neat thing to get is clear shrink tubing. That way you can put a label on, on a cable, slide the clear shrink tubing over it, shrink it down, and that way the label doesn't go anywhere. And, and, and it's pretty much on there until you cut it off. I would suggest using a hobby knife to do that. But that, using rings. Oh, the last thing is if you have a game system, game room setup thing going on, have room for expansion. Also, try your best to have a guest system input. And what I, what I mean when I say that is if you have a friend that has a Turbo Duo R or a Neo Geo AES or something like that, and you're wanting them to come over and bring that system that you do not own and plug it into your entertainment center, have it readily available. Have ports or cables set off to the side so that you can plug in really fast and get it onto your television and stuff like that. So you can have fun fast. You know, no one wants to sit there and wait around while you're fiddling around with an entertainment center and you had to pull it, get your friend to help you pull it out and then push it back. And then by that time, you're both tired or something like that, depending on how heavy the system, the uh, entertainment center is and how much is involved. Just have, have guest ports available. It works out really well. It allows you to test things to make sure that, hey, did, did I accidentally disconnect something? Let's hook it up to the guest hookups and, and see what happens. Yeah. But these are all of my tips for basically slaying the spaghetti monster and, and just getting some good cable management uh, tactics down for your entertainment center. Well, that's it for this episode of Mundane Designs. I'm your host, Mundane, and I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. If you like what you see, you can support me and my channel on Patreon by clicking one of the links below. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a wonderful day.